All right, so imagine a ring of wire. All right, it's a complete circuit. All right, just a, a thin wire. Um, and we start it rotating um, at some initial uh, rotation omega naught. All right, so angular velocity omega naught. All right, and we place it in a constant magnetic field, uh, B. All right, by the way, this loop of wire it, so it's a, it's a circle of, of this wire it has a radius of big R all right so I didn't draw it round because it's it's at an angle to us so it's it's rotating around like this all right so here's here's a side view of it all right so here's the magnetic field coming up and then a side view of this um, this uh, rotating hoop going around like this, and it makes some theta of some angle with respect to the horizontal. All right, a few things about this wire. Um, it has a mass density of rho and a conductivity, electrical conductivity of sigma. All right, um, and also um, we don't necessarily need to know this, um, but uh, the if we were to cut this wire, you see my crude drawing here. But if we were to cut this wire, it has a finite thickness. I just called that little r. All right. So it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, the radius of the cross section is little r. All right. So the question that we have is if we start this thing rotating and then place it, we switch on this magnetic field, how fast does this stop? So the principle behind this is um, nature abhors a change in flux, right? So Lenz's law. So we have the flux uh, from the, the field, right? It will be, um, depending on how much area is presented to it, we'll have a certain amount of flux, which is changing as this uh, loop spins around and that will create an EMF or an electromotive force uh, within the wire and the current will start to flow. All right, and then due to the um, finite conductivity of this wire, so there will be a resistance and uh, that resistance will start dissipating the energy of the initial uh, rotation. So our question is just how fast does that does that occur? All right. So um, here we go. Uh, uh, we will start with uh, Lenz's law, and we'll just be jumping around a bit, uh, gathering some of the pieces of this, and then uh, we'll hopefully uh, put them all together, and they, they should make sense. So um, f first of all, to find the flux, um, we want to dot the, um, the uh, magnetic field here with, so this A isn't a vector potential or anything, it's a, it's the um, area, um, whatever, I'll just draw it like this, the area vector of our, of our loop. All right, and it doesn't really matter what we, where, it turns out what we're going to be doing is averaging over over all of this because we're assuming it spins much faster than it, um, than it's uh, slowing down initially. So um, what we can do here is uh, simply uh, we take the magnitude of the uh, field here. We take the area of the loop when it's uh, perpendicular to the field. So that's just a pi big R squared, this, and then uh, multiply that by the cosine. So just taking the projection of the of the hoop onto this onto this surface, which is perpendicular to the, the field. All right, so that's easy enough. Now uh, we take the so Lenz's law, right? electromotive force is going to be equal to the the opposite of the t 
time derivative of the flux, the, so the, the opposite of the change in flux. So um, we'll go ahead and take the time derivative of this. Um, B, we're holding constant. R is constant. The only thing changing is theta. So I'm going to get a minus B e pi R squared sine of theta and then theta dot. All right, just using the chain rule there. All right, um, let's see what we can do now. So now that we know the, the EMF, um, just by joule heating, what, what uh, we know that the, the power dissipated in a resistor is equal to IB. And using Ohm's law, um, this uh, becomes V squared over R, except I'm, I'm going to call this R um, with a little Ohm sign down here because we don't want to get it confused with this big R right here, which is the radius of our hoop. So, um, but we won't be seeing this much because we'll, we'll use the conductivity instead. Okay, so um, this V is our EMF. So let's go ahead and write that in there. Okay, so um, this is the power, right, the rate at which energy is being dissipated by the wire. So uh, let's uh, find that real quick. All right, so we need to put the square of this up top. We have a V squared, pi squared r to the fourth sine squared theta and then theta dot squared all right now um like i said we won't be using this r sub omega um, we're just going to calculate the resistance based on this dimension all right so the uh the resistance let's just write it out real quick this is going to be equal to um, the, the the length divided by the cross section area, and then also divided by the uh, conductivity. All right. So down here, uh, the length of our of our wire is two pi multiplied by big R. And downstairs, down downstairs, we have uh, the cross-sectional area of our wire. So pi little r squared. And then we have our conductivity. All right, so uh, some of these will divide out. So this pi will divide out. This r down here will divide out. Um, well, I guess this pi and this pi can divide out. That might be easier. Um, we can flip this little r squared and this sigma up top and just leave the two down here. So let's see if we can get all these things right. So we have, we still have a b squared. Uh, this pi is going away, so we have a pi squared still. Now we have an r cubed because uh, this will cancel with one of those. Um, we have this little r squared. We have a sigma, these two guys. We have a sine squared of theta. We have a theta dot squared. And then on the bottom, we just have our two left. OK. All right, so um, our, uh, our, our change in energy of, of the, so the mechanical energy with respect to time is going to be equal to minus uh, this this power because it's dissipating it. So let's go ahead and calculate the uh, energy of the system to begin with. All right, um, energy is equal to one half i omega squared, and if we um, if we look at the, let's just 
yeah, let's just leave it at this form right now. Okay. Um, all right, so now we need to know I. Um, for, for a ring that is, if I, if I had my ring like this and I'm turning it this way, then that one's easy. It's just MR squared. Um, but now I'm turning it this way. But there's a, a tricky little theorem that I guess only applies under certain conditions. Fortunately, it applies here. I think it might be, they might call it the perpendicular axis theorem or something like that. That just tells us that uh, the eye rotating this way is one half the eye rotating this way. So we get a one half, um, I'll use an M R squared. All right, now one more thing, uh, we need to uh, put this M in terms of our of our, uh, our density, mass density, right? So we have a one half. Um, our M is the mass density multiplied by the volume. So that is uh, two pi big R. I'm gonna run out of space, obviously. Uh, two pi big R multiplied by the cross-sectional area of pi little r squared. All right, so there's the volume, here's the density, so we got the mass, and now we need to have this other r squared here on the end. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and take a new page. Let's find our, our i, let's just simplify it down a little bit. Um, so I see that this two, I believe, should cancel with this other two. Um, I squared. Okay, let's try this. So we'll have our I'll we'll have our row, we'll have a pi squared, we'll have a little r squared, and we'll have a big R cubed. Alright, I hope I, I did that right. Okay. Alright, so now we now we know our I. Let's go back up and find our E. All right, um, so we have our one half now, this time from the E. Then we plug in our I, which is rho pi squared, little r squared, big R cubed, omega squared. All right, all right, we're getting closer. So now, so we found the, the dissipation power way back here, and we have our, um, we just need to take the time derivative of this and set it equal to minus uh, this dissipation power, or the, the, the power being dissipated. All right, so let's take the time derivative of this. Um, constant, constant, constant. The only thing changing is this omega again. All right, so uh, let me just... So we have a row pi squared r squared r cubed omega. Okay, I think I got all that right. Okay, and then I need, uh, using the chain rule, I'll need the omega dot. Um, we'll, we'll figure out all the, putting it all in terms of theta or versus omega, we'll figure all that out later. All right, let me just uh, see, check for mistakes real quick. All right, I think we're good to go. So um, let's go ahead and set this equal to the other side. So rho pi squared, little r squared, big R cubed, omega, omega dot is equal to, and then this negative p here. We'll, we'll go ahead and plug this in. Let's see if I can get it all on the screen. I don't know. Okay. Minus. <laughs> Excuse me. All 
All right, so b squared pi squared r cubed little r squared uh, sigma sine squared of theta and then uh, theta dot squared. Theta dot is equal to omega, so let me just call that omega squared. All right, and this is all divided by two. All right, let's do some canceling. So we we can cancel out this omega with one of these. This r squared goes out, so we don't have to worry about it at all, actually. That's nice. Um, big R cubed cancels out. Pi squared cancels out. And so, uh, let me just write this as omega dot. I'm just going to bring this row down to the other side. Omega dot is equal to minus b squared sigma uh, sine squared theta omega. Let me draw a line here so we keep these guys separate. Uh, sine squared omega, and then we had a 2, and then we had this row. All right, so the mass density. All right. So um, we're getting close. Uh, what we've got now uh, to do is to make the assumption that the change um, that it's only changing slowly relative to its uh, rotational speed. So just meaning um, it's spinning very fast and we're able to average over at least you know one or two revolutions or something. So that's probably not an unreasonable thing to ask. Um, and uh, the, what we're doing here is we're focusing on this sine squared of theta. Uh, that's kind of the the oddball in this in this equation, because otherwise we just have uh, uh, just a, a first order uh, differential equation, just an exponential decay, right? Which is exactly what we would expect. Um, so anyway, if we average uh, sine squared of theta, um, over one revolution, or any even number of revolutions, right, we get one half, okay? So we could do the integration if you want. But we, um, so, so making this average, what we end up with now is omega dot equals minus b squared, uh, the sigma, and now we have a four row here on the, on the end. Uh, and omega. All right. So um, uh, this is just like we like we said an exponential decay. Um, so if we have omega, so the solution to this, right? We'd have some constant, uh, which the initial condition, right? Which is which we're calling omega naught e the minus b squared sigma over 4 rho, okay, and then uh, t, all right. So if I take the, de the time derivative of this, it brings down this factor of minus b squared sigma over 4 rho, and then it's just multiplied by itself. So taking the time derivative, we get this factor of minus b squared sigma over 4 rho and then itself. So this is a solution to this, or the solution, I guess, to, to this equation. All right, so um, another way to write this um, is to just look at a characteristic time. So usually people call that tau. Um, and so this would be the time it takes uh, for the for the rotation to be reduced to one over e, meaning this e, one over e of its initial or of its former um, value. So, um, so that's kind of the one of the 
um, characteristic uh, uh, values for uh, the system is uh, what is that time constant? How long does it take for the rotation to, to be reduced to 1 over e of its former value? All right, uh, so let's go ahead and solve for that, okay? So the characteristic time tau, um, well you can see we just get rid of this minus sign and this t, and then we flip it, uh, what, what we've got up here. So we just have a four row, four times the mass density, and b squared and sigma here on the bottom. So uh, let's just double check that this makes sense. Um, if we have a very high row, we expect a long time because the ring will have a lot of inertia. So it will want to just keep going on and, um, and it will, or will, yeah, it just has a lot of momentum built up that it has to, has to do, get rid of. Um, we see a B squared down here, which I guess makes sense since we're multiplying it. All right, what matters is uh, the B through the area. So. Anyway, so it, dis it, it depends uh, strongly on B. So if we turn B up, then uh, that's the, the fastest way we can uh, decrease our, uh, slow this thing down as fast as possible. Um, also, uh, sigma. So if, uh, what's, what would this be? So if, if the conductivity, well, this is a little bit interesting, I guess. If the conductivity is high, then we get much more current uh, flowing in the loop. So um, that's that's a bit interesting uh, because you would think um, you would think that uh, you know with higher conductivity you get less resistance and you know maybe less loss uh, through the resistor. But I guess. Um, Maybe the maybe the current wins in this case, so the higher currents over overpower the the lower resistance, and you're able to um, right. And if we so and so if we look at the power dissipated, and we just use Ohm's law again, we could have written this as I squared R. Um, and we put this little omega on the bottom remember its resistance all right so so yeah clearly we can see that the 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 current is what matters more than than the resistance in this so that's why having a more conductive wire actually causes it to slow down faster it makes more energy uh, dissipate so that's an interesting uh, physical insight there all right so let's go ahead and uh, plug in some values real quick um, so just for the sake of argument, let's say uh, this is a copper ring. I pulled these off of Wolfram Alpha earlier. So the conductivity is equal to uh, 5.9 times 10 to the 7. All right, and then that's 1 over uh, ohm believe. I hope I got my units right on this. All right. Uh, the mass density for copper is 8,960 kilograms per meter cubed. And let's just say our field strength is 0 0.02 Tesla. All right. So these are all the SI units. And um, and so we um, will just plug these in here, and uh, let's see. We get about. Um, let me just double check this. Yeah. For um, let me put a little cu down here. Um, I guess it's also at at, uh, at the 0.02 tesla. That is what matters as well. Um, to be weird about it. Okay, so um, I get about 1.5. All right, about 1.5 seconds. 
All right, so if we actually did have a, a ring, you know, um, we don't we don't have like a frictionless bearing and and uh, various things, but 1.5 seconds seems about reasonable for this reasonable uh, magnetic field. Um, so yeah, there's there's some values uh, for the copper ring.